Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. What follows is new, and it will be seen as controversial as always. <laughs> the controversy is from those who have learned a certain thing a certain way, and whatever that thing is, is based upon a culture that they understand that is linear. One of the hardest things that any human being can do is to get out of the box that they were born in, a box which makes sense. It makes sense because it's the way things work. It makes sense because that's how you were trained. It makes sense because that's what your loved ones said. It makes sense because as you learned certain things, including those things were spiritual and metaphysical, that's the way it worked. And now I come along and give you a whole different perspective. And before I even do it, I tell you this. It's a new perspective, dear ones, because the energy of this planet is starting to support the understanding of it. There will be those of you who will nod your heads because now it makes sense. As opposed to not making sense, but simply accepting it. It's the minutia that helps to understand it, and yet it brings up something that is completely different, so different, that you shake your hand, you shake your head and you say, I, I don't understand how this works. Multidimensional things, dear ones, that are completely and totally beyond the dimension you live in are odd and strange. You can't understand multidimensional life that might exist in ways that do not conform to your definition of life. Because all you have is biology. How do you feel about light? Does light have life? And you will say, well, it doesn't seem to reproduce. It doesn't seem to you. You tick off the things that does not make sense, do not make sense in your definition. And yet, light changes if you're around. <laughs> light changes if you observe it. That is almost a cause and effect relationship to human consciousness and light. So where are you going to go with that? Light is a multidimensional energy that actually can respond to human consciousness. So in that, it starts to bring up other questions. What's alive? What's not alive? What is your definition of life? I give you that only because what comes next is extremely complex. Again, we open the door to the discussion that is so beautiful about the human soul. The human soul is not anything like what you were told. Even if you follow the cryon messages, I just give you surface information, summary information about the complexity, the beauty, the enormity, the magnificence of your soul. You use the word so simply. On a ship reports how many souls are on board. It's a reference to how many human beings. Because that's how you see it. There's a human. Each human has a soul. Now then you turn to spiritual teaching. And you ask, what is a soul? And how it works. And you will hear many descriptions, but most of them linear. You have a soul. It is with you for life. That soul existed before you came. You take that soul. You come into the world. You make the choices you make. The soul is with you. You leave. The soul goes on to the other side of the veil. The soul comes back in again. Now that is a reincarnated soul. Not all believe that. Many believe the soul is just here for a while and it goes away and it never comes back. 
So different are the attitudes and ideas. The original spiritual systems of this planet, the very, very original, saw the soul as reincarnating constantly. Those systems also saw the energy of what we would call karma today. Karma that being the expression of the energies of life before yours that you would carry in to this life that would have an energy that would have to be dealt with. That energy to a Hindu is primary. You will go to all lengths to experience nirvana which is a cleansing of your karma. And so all of these principles were original principles. They are the most intuitive ones you can find on this planet to what the core truth is. Today, the soul becomes linear and the information about it, you wouldn't believe how simple it either is or isn't. What happens when you die? Well, the soul goes away. I have sat in front of you many times and I have given you information about soul splitting. I've asked you to even examine what is your higher self? It is a higher portion of your soul. Where is it? And then I tell you there is no such thing as where when it comes to multidimensionality. Location itself is a linear idea, dear ones. And if I tell you that the soul is everywhere all the time and all parts of the galaxy because it is attached to the creative source which is multidimensional and is everywhere all the time in the galaxy you may start to understand but that's you your soul it's not local it doesn't simply come in with you dear ones it's still around the galaxy that's hard isn't it wait a minute cryon you mean my soul is not completely in my body. You got it. How could you have a higher self and it all would be in your body? The higher self must be somewhere else. Higher. <laughs> <laughs> then you start to realize there is an element of splitting. Now that word is wrong. Because even splitting is an absolute linear concept. You have one thing and out comes the knife and you have two. That's splitting. That is not the way of it. It's the only concept I can use. You don't have a word that is an amalgamation, a confluence of sharing one soul with maybe a million. It's not in that which I will call your understanding. It just isn't there. So what comes next is even more difficult. All of that to say, I would like to define today the walk-in. I've never done this. In the channel that we gave a moment ago, we sat next to the teacher, Marilyn. And when she channels, dear ones, she closes her eyes and then opens them, and she's someone else. All of this took place after an experience that she had called the walk-in. It's been well documented in her life and what she describes and in that she describes it conforms to what metaphysics describes is a walk-in. And everything I'm going to tell you right now doesn't make sense to that. You linearize everything. Let's talk about a walk-in and how it's supposed to work in its basic form. Also, when it starts to work, how often the most common. But it goes like this. You're minding your own business with your own soul. <laughs> and then because of something, which we'll describe, another soul walks in to your life and you become so different that you don't even recognize that which was before. 
It is so startlingly different, as was the case with Marilyn, the teacher, that even her son asked the question, what have you done with my mother? That is how profound the shift and the change is. And to a human being, there's only one answer. You shifted souls. So the soul you were born with goes away somehow, or stays in the back seat somehow. Another soul comes in somehow, and that is then who you get. It's called a walk-in. So before we even discuss any more of the actuality and the reality of what might be taking place here, before we go there, I want to talk about when it often happens. This plays into what I'm going to tell you. It's a beautiful story. And there are those in this room who have experienced it. It is common to humans to go into an emergency situation, whether it's an accident, a hospital, home, where they will have what is called a near-death experience. Even that is mislabeled. Your definition of death is very clear scientifically. Many have died several times on the operating table. That all comes together in what metaphysicians have called an NDE, near death experience. So we'll call them an NDE. If you talk to someone who has had an NDE, there are varying stories. Interestingly enough, they're not always positive. It has to do with the consciousness of the one that has had the experience. Let us talk about those who have had the experience and have come out changed. What happens during a near-death experience? First of all, the idea that you died is preposterous. You only died clinically. You'd know if you were dead. But you come close when there is even a beginning inkling of a shutdown of systems that are vital for life. When you stop breathing, when your heart stops, when the systems that are supposed to function because of oxygenation don't have oxygen. All of these signal the brain the brain does something you don't ever, ever know. It has a program for this. When it starts to realize that death is imminent, I want to tell you something. All of you have a safety valve. It's a consciousness of benevolence that comes over you to protect you from what you've been told is the horror of death. And it starts giving you some wonderful feelings of benevolence and light that you'll never forget. It's common almost to all of those who experience positive NDEs. They go into a tunnel perhaps, or they will see the light perhaps, or they'll feel the love of God perhaps, and they're not afraid at all. Am I telling you that this is not accurate? I'm telling you it's very accurate. Your brain is programmed for the truth. And in those times where death seems to be eminent or could be eminent, the body doesn't know the difference, whether it's dying or whether it's going to be saved in a moment. It starts to run the program of benevolent love to let you feel the truth of it. The truth is that you will continue that it's beautiful, that there is no shutdown, dear ones, that is no horror story, that it's going to be okay, and it is. That is a truth that is hardwired to yourselves, your heart, your brain, your pineal, all working together to show it to you. So you won't be afraid. 
That's the love of God. It's a program. What, what often happens, dear ones, is you come out of that changed forever. Because the program started to run and you didn't die, you got a glimpse of the truth. And in that, you come out of the operation, you come out of the near-death experience, and suddenly it's all different. Oh boy, is it different. And some of you, for some of you, it's so different what you have done, get ready, is to enhance your soul's experience to the next level, or the next three levels, where it isn't now. You realize, don't you, your soul is in 3D right now. An enhanced soul is one who is not in 3D, who's had an experience. I'll talk about that in a moment. That goes beyond anything you might ever have experienced so far. And you come out so changed that you seem like another person. You go so beyond who you were that to everybody else, they'll say, what have you done with my mother? Kind of. Do you see what I'm saying? Did you receive the soul specifically of another human being? And the answer is no. That's controversial. But you have to then identify what's in your soul. Does your soul include potentially those family or those you've met in past lives who've melded with your soul? And the answer is yes. <laughs> your soul is not your own. It's got family in it. That is controversy. Because you want to look in the mirror and say, I own my own soul. Nobody's in there but me. What about all the helpers and the guides who come with you? Where do you think they live? On the ceiling? They live inside you. The entourage which we speak of is yours. It's inside you. It comes with the territory. It comes with the soul. You just happen to be in charge of that multidimensional thing you call the Merkaba for those times. When you go to the other side of the veil, there is a combination. You go back to the family. There's no one name that you have that's above any others. There's a name you all have. And you sing the song in light, and we've talked about it. That's complex. Back to the walk-in. You know where else you see this? Advanced souls. That is, souls that have a huge awakening that yanks them out of an old energy and puts them into something that is brand new and multidimensional, looks completely and totally different. You see it every day in the religions around you where somebody has an awakening to the love of God. It doesn't matter what the religion is. Love is love. We have told you this before. Whatever the belief system, there may come a time when a human being has wallowed in old energy and all of the trials of life or has a healing and buys into the love of God as presented by a pastor or a priest or a mom, whatever and comes to a brand new conclusion, I'll tell you, did they have a walk-in? Let me ask you. Because it looks like it. Did you ever interview them? And they will say, yesterday I was one person, today I'm another. I would never do what I did before because today I have the love of God. They may quote scripture to you, nothing to do with the love they feel that is absolutely core truth love and they feel it in their heart and they know they're different. They'll be able to count the days from their experience. That's not a lot different than a walk-in, is it? What has just happened is this. You didn't get another person's soul, dear one. You got your own soul enhanced. Enhanced so far beyond who you were that it's another creature. It thinks differently. It acts differently. It's not interested in the things that you were before the experience. Whether it's a near death or whether it is simply a decision made in life about love. It often is accompanied by an event. 
Because that event will then push the envelope and be a catalyst for what happens. In the case of Maryland, it was an operation. An operation will do that quite often. You're taken to a place that is not where you normally are. If you're sedated, if there's chemicals, if there's a time where you change consciousness, quite often this is the time where the soul says, are you ready for the next step? You're not doing what you came for. And at some level you say, oh boy, am I, let's go. And you come out differently than you went in. I'm telling you something that you should know. You're not getting another person. You're getting yourself enhanced. We've told you before, the prophets that walked around and some who still do and are able to change physics and emote benevolence that you want to sit at their feet and where they walk flowers grow and the animals follow them this is a soul that is working at a very very high level they could also be a soul dear ones the life before working at the same level as the consciousness of the planet in other words that's the choice you have the only difference is in the degree at which the soul is fully activated from the love of God on the other side of the veil do you hear that where are you in all of this up to this point a walk-in very special to so many, I'm going to tell you there have been walk-ins in this room, and you don't know it. But can you point to a place where you had an experience of aha, where you went to sleep one way and woke up another because now you get it, where you allowed or spoke in a way that said, Spirit, I'm ready to go to the next step. And in that, you changed forever. Let me tell you about something. A walk-in. You have free choice, but you cannot go backwards to a lower soul. You cannot go backwards. If you try, you will be in dysfunction. But you cannot then regain older energy. It only goes one way. It goes up. Marilyn talks about a reunification with the old soul. Now that is a linear idea. But what happened is real. What she was able to do was to recognize it was another step in the evolution of her soul. She had the idea and the recognition that she could reunite even with the soul of lower energy and recapture the good things that were there, the memories, the children, the births, all of these things. That was an advancement. So it was not a reunification with the old soul before a walk-in. It was an advancement of the soul that she has now to a new, higher level, to allow her to teach this, to understand this, to be able to reunite with who she used to be in a way that was mature and made sense and was balanced. I don't want this information to be received in a way that will be disappointing. I want you to understand the magnificence of an, ev an evolution process of your soul. This is happening more often than you think. Is the man who sits in front of you a walk-in? If you wanted to look at the definition, you'd say it's iffy. He went from one person to another. Well, it took him several years, but he still did. Is that a walk-in? And the answer is no. And yet if you look at his former life, there would be those who used to know him who would look at him now and say, at what point in time did you go insane? Because you are nothing like the man I knew or that I worked next to or that I, that I was a colleague with. 
You're completely and totally different. Something, the, the, some would say, well, that's because a dark entity got a hold of you and shaped your life because that's what they're taught happens. Dear ones, I want to tell you the truth. The soul of the man you see in front of you gradually evolved into what you see now. Not a walk-in, but that is exactly what happened to Marilyn. Only it happened instantly. That is what has happened to so many who have an aha experience without an NDE or without an operation because the energy of today is starting to support it. When you start to awaken to a grander truth and then if you're confident and brave enough to say to spirit, I love you God, I trust you God, is this real? Then you stand by for validation because that's exactly what my partner did in a chair 30 years ago. As the engineer, he wanted validation that it actually was true and he got it in his heart in a way that only he can tell. That is the instant thing that you're after that is possible with every single one of you. Most don't ask. Most stay in their box. But the old souls of this planet are beginning to awaken to a bigger truth. One that talks about the magnificence of the plan, where you are on the earth, and what is happening around you. Years ago, I told you that the shift would bring out the dark side. It did. Instantly. I told you about the army that was coming together that had no borders. For the first time, armies always have borders. That the only thing this army was interested in was frightening you. Was celebrating the dark. And they got bigger and bigger. You had a name for them. You know what it is. I also told you that they didn't have a chance because darkness is not that bright. <laughs> In other words, they're not very enlightened with common sense. All they did from the depths of their ignorance was to stir up the planet against them. Yesterday, they died. And you can read it on your news. It was the last bastion of this army that was going to take over the darkness of the planet and change everything. Their death, dear ones, is simply the death of an old paradigm. You see, they're still around. Now they will move to the next step and become more elegant in their darkness. Watch for it. Because the darkness will not give up. This has been the way of it for centuries. They're not going away. But they're also not going to win. Because still, they're not very bright. Everywhere they go, you'll be able to point and go, what's wrong with that? This is darkness. I can see it. It's negative. It's trying to enslave. It's trying to control. It's this. It's that. Regular population. Non-old souls alike will see it for what it is. Because there is now light starting to happen on this planet that's being received. And saying, this is the way of it. This is the respect of it. This is the way it should have been. I like this. This is the direction I'm going. Mothers and fathers seeing it in their children. Where their children are actually showing them the way it could be. Social media having... Something the planet has never seen where hundreds if not thousands talking to each other constantly across the barrier of culture and country. All of these things, dear ones, is the beginning of light. I've given you these things before. Your soul is starting to wake up. The walk-in is the result of a fast wake-up. 
for an advanced soul, but it really is you. It's not someone else. It's the soul on steroids. <laughs> I knew Marilyn would like that. And so it does not diminish the experience. It enhances it. You are truly magnificent, dear. And all that you've been through, Marilyn, is magnificent. And will continue. Because the evolution of your soul is not finished. At all. Listen carefully, because all of you have this. You have the ability to awaken to a grander truth simply by examination and sticking up your hand and saying, Dear God, if it's real, show me. That should be fair, and it is. And you'll be shown. This is the way it works, dear ones, for so many. That's the message you needed to hear this day. And so it is.